Federation of American Scientists issued a press release in 2006 calling the use of video games in education the next great discovery. But I read the fine print. Well, these Federation folks weren't educational scientists. Otherwise, they should have been familiar with the many meta-analyses that had already shown time and again that games showed at best no significant differences in controlled studies over controlled instruction methods. So those hoping technology will close educational gaps and defeat poverty are going to be disappointed. If it were just a simple matter of connecting with the kids, in the last century they would have put subliminal maths lessons in Elvis records and on hula hoops. This is just as silly as some of the thinking today that we can put boring lessons on groovy technology and it will automatically engage the kids. And those toys the kids play with today. Uh, spacesuits, rocket ships, atomic ray guns. Space Captain calling Rocket Patrol. Do you read me? Rocket Patrol speaking. I read you, Space Captain. But as we discussed in earlier modules, no difference can make a great difference if you can do it quickly and cheaply. So in this module, I hope to steer you through the sea of negative findings, past the Jetsons Futurama robotic world, here I'm dropping Judy off at school. Blondes away! Well, thank you very much. And that's perfectly all right. And if there's anything else you want to know about your robot, don't hesitate to give us a ring. Good day. Fun, but nonsense. George Burns summed it up so well. You know, kids nowadays are geniuses. I couldn't split an atom until I was 12. Here is a summary of meta-analyses by Richard Clark at the Center for Cognitive Technology, University of Southern California. Let's look at one of Dr. Clark's punchlines. Cognitive overload is a fairly straightforward theory. Here's an example I love. Check this equation. Here's a funny Greek letter. And why do we let R stand for particular gas constant? Why not G or PGC. It's hard enough for me to grasp this set of relations where the square root of something is squared, then divide by something that is itself squared, but we make it even harder if we have to retain in memory confusing abbreviations. Here's my alternative example. Cognitive load equals the stuff to learn plus extraneous tasks imposed on top of the stuff to learn. A game may just add a lot of fluff that confuses and detracts from the task. Our hope is that the fluff adds that magical engagement and motivational factor. Hmm, good luck. So, the strategic use of games resolves from benefit down to cost-benefit ratio. If we assume that benefits will be constant or even somewhat reduced, we focus on the costs. We don't have to hope that the new technology has increased its educational impact. If all that has happened is that technology prices have come down and it's easier to implement, that's enough to change the benefit-cost equation. There have been times when new technology just added more burden of learning to use it and support it. As mentioned in the beginning of this course, a game might reduce costs. If I can offer this course online for free because YouTube.com and OpenLearning.com are paying for the heavy lifting, that keeps the costs way down. But another big cost saving is that someone has already invested heavily in you, the audience. You are likely to be educated adults. I merely need to offer some fairly weird, obscure tips and ideas, and it's up to you whether you choose to run with them. That is training in the adult world. The evangelists for games have mostly applied them to the adult training world, not schools. Note the set of skills the Federation of American Scientists promoted. Higher order, practical skills, high performance situations, rarely used skills, expertise, team building. That is corporate jet airplane, nuclear submarine, space station stuff, not learning third grade maths. Mark Prinsky is a main driver in the games movement. He recommends it to liven up dry, technical, boring, difficult stuff with audiences that are hard to reach. Again, this is the adult world. So Prensky and the Federation of Scientists have given us a pretty good outline of strategic use.
Clark has given us some cautions, and he has concluded that the answer is economic, not educational. If we can get the same results more quickly and cheaply, even taking in the cost of software and the cost of our time and that of the learner, we may still get a lot of bang for buck with gamification. In the next modules, I'll show you how any task can be transmuted into a game version. So for homework, think of some tasks that fit the description of the Federation of American Scientists. Higher order, boring, difficult stuff. We should not be taking material that is already easy and fun and making it into a game. Think of things that need the magic touch.